Nashville, Tennessee. It's the three. And here's your host, Laura Harris-Smith. Welcome back to The Three, everybody. I'm Laura, so glad that you've joined us today. We are in Stowe, Vermont at the Trap Family Lodge. I'm so glad that you've joined us and I hope that you are enjoying the interview that we have been granted with Christina Von Trapp. Uh, so we're gonna jump right back into that. So exciting for you to just get to know a little bit about the family that maybe things that you don't know uh, could not have seen in the movie because this family is so much bigger and broader and more famous than the movie ever made them. They are still alive and well uh, in Vermont. Many of them are. Johannes, the youngest, that went on to be had by Maria and Georg von Trapp, actually owns this lodge and runs it with his children and now has grandchildren. What a family legacy. Without further delay, I'm going to jump right back into my interview with Christina von Trapp. Here it is. Okay, one last quote. This again from your father, and this was about Austria. My mother would love the food, love the culture, but the weight of tradition and custom is so strong in Austria. It says that when he picked her up at the airport, she would stretch her arms out wide and say, Oh, Johannes, I am so glad to be back here because I can breathe again. Having never been to Vermont until uh, 24 hours ago when we arrived, that is exactly how it feels here. Now, we being in Tennessee, we have plenty of mountains. Um, I'm probably now going to start referring to them as foothills <laughs> because there's <laughs> definitely mountains there. Uh, but so I imagine her loving it here. And I think what you've created at this lodge provides people with the same exact opportunity to come and to experience what she did. Even though she loved Austria, she loved coming here. She felt like she could breathe. So tell us anything you want to about the lodge, how they can find you, um, what you hope they'll experience here. Because I know there are other people like me who did not know that it existed. Yeah. Give us everything. Tell, tell us what they um, should do to find you first of all. Okay, so we have a website, trapfamily.com. Um, we have an 800 number. Um, 800-826-7000, okay. um, but the, our website really is fantastic, trapfamily.com, because it shows pictures of our place in the different seasons. Exactly. We're, we're a four season resort. Um, we're really busy in the summer, we're really busy in the winter. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's amazing how my grandmother nailed that, saying I can breathe again, because our property and our hillside here is so peaceful. And people just come here and just feel this immediate sense of relaxation. It is a beautiful, peaceful place. And people come here for honeymoons. People come for family reunions. People come with their family. They come if they've lost a family member. Um, there's so many ways to enjoy our property. And um, my grandmother just recognized that. They actually had put a down payment on a property in southern Vermont. And when they found this property, they let that down payment go, which was a big deal. Oh, they didn't have I a lot did. of money. They said, this is it. This is wow. where this is where we want to be because we have views 270 degrees. Mm -hmm. We have the sunrise. We have the sunset. Um, it's just beautiful here. So It is so beautiful. And then on site, you mentioned some of the things, that, but they do weddings. You do, oh do, my do gosh. you have weddings? We do weddings. We do weddings year round, really. Does everybody, yeah. do you have girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes? Is that, <laughs> do you? I can't imagine. We, we have all kinds of things. <laughs> you can't imagine the things that you've seen. Yeah. Okay. So then when someone uh, comes, I would like to come back at a different time of year. I mean, I know it's beautiful in the snow here. I've already established that I'm not a skier. Uh, but so let's say during the summer, what could they yeah. come and do here? Yeah, in the summer. So whether whenever season you come, we always have 2,600 acres of property <laughs> to explore at your own pace. Um, you know, you can cross country ski, you could snowshoe, you could just hike on the road in the, in the winter time. Um, in the summer, we have hiking on all of our trails. We have um, mountain bike slash multi-use trails. 
that are open um, and we have 65 kilometers of cross-country ski trails but then we have another like 12 miles of single track trails we have tennis courts outdoor pool indoor pool um, sauna a full yep a sauna uh, indoor gym um, weddings outside you know or inside um, my gosh I just and you know and we have a whole agricultural component so it's a meet the cows tour we also have chickens um, sheep and a lot of this food is served in your dining hall yeah. which we went to last night okay here we go again I'm at home and I'm thinking I'm singing my favorite things and I'm thinking, surely they have schnitzel with noodles and crisp apple strudel. Well, that's not what it says on the menu, but it's called Wiener Schnitzel. So I had last night, I had the Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Gluten-free, yep. so I was yep, really good. happy. And then, uh, and then I had the apple strudel. Apple strudel. Apple strudel. Yeah. And we have a bakery. And it's so and it, delicious. Yeah. So that so all of our baked goods and our breads are made at our bakery on property. You don't even have to be staying here to experience some of these tours. Uh, you can come on the property. You can pay to be a part of the family talk, which we've shown clips of. Um, you have people pouring in here. I mean, 365 days a year. It sounds like. We do. We don't have locks on our front doors. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. We're open all the time. And there's always something to do. Whether it's reading a book in front of a fireplace. You know, that's one of my favorite things to do when I go on vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have, a, we have a whole card room, uh, game room. Um, you know, we do movies nightly. Yeah. My husband and I are actually in the middle of writing a book. And so part of it is being written from your lodge because, oh. because that's our plan. We're staying for an additional day Great. and we just, it's just so inspirational here. So I won't yeah. be reading a book by far, I'll be writing a book. Uh -oh. uh, and and I, I think I'm going to plug the lodge in it and say, here's where I am as I'm sitting here writing this chapter. I, I mean, we will definitely be back. It is a little piece of heaven here, or as you say, a little of Austria, a lot of Vermont. Yeah. Um, how shall I say this? I think I want to say it on behalf of of all of the Sound of Music fans um, and just say thank you for creating a place that acknowledges that but really celebrates who the Von Trapps are. Your family is so amazing and the generations go on. You have two children. The, uh, as you said, there are some of the grandchildren that have still sung and, and are still singing. Um, I think Werner was one of the ones, didn't he build the, the, chapel, built the chapel on the, so yeah. no matter where you turn, there's just yeah. such, rich history. Is there anything else that you want to say or leave us with? No. Well, thank you for coming <laughs> and, and being interested. And, um, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head where you're saying we are separate and what we have built here is separate from the Sound of Music movie yes. legacy. Yes. And they did an amazing job with that. But what we have created is a little more calm mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> yes. um, down to earth. We're not, yeah. we're not sitting back, you know, waltzing in a gorgeous dress every evening, no. which would be fun. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. That would be <laughs> wonderful. But um, we just have this wonderful spot here and we're happy to have people come visit. And because it is important to us that people realize it's still family owned and operated. Yeah. And that's why we have a Von Trapp um, finishing the history tours. And we are just like anybody else. So be nice to your family and your neighbors because <laughs> we're all the same. That's why there's so much authenticity uh, here. The staff is friendly and, it, and it's, no, it's not just friendly. You walk in and you feel like you are family. Uh, no matter what I have asked for here, whether it was, hey, can you print this, print my notes out uh, or Hey, can I have the Johannes burger, you know, at supper time instead of just at lunch on the lunch mate? All yeses. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a tagline. This is the <laughs> Trap Family Lodge, the land of yeses. <laughs> so you have figured out what, our, what we are trying to accomplish. In German, there's a word Gemütlichkeit. Okay. It means unpretentious, warm, excellent hospitality. So. That's what you are. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly thank what you, you are. Christina, thank you thank so you, much. God bless the Von Trapp family, and we will be back. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And there's even snow here for us. All right, don't go anywhere, guys. Right after the break, we'll be back with more from the Von Trapp Family Lodge in Stowe, Vermont. A lady is a lens. Yes, a woman. Game food! I Get my time. <laughs> yeah, happy. It's my bathtub. 
Happy birthday. Hey, sister. What's your name? Ray. That's you. <laughs> I'm a bubble. Ah! I got one. I want to hold it. Happy birthday. <laughs> Big green, you win the big green, you win the big green. You win the big green, you win the big green. You win the big green. I got it. I win. What if there was a reset button for your body, mind, and spirit? There is. I wrote the 30 Day Faith Detox so you could cleanse your body, renew your mind, and heal your spirit. There are 30 daily devotionals to confront emotional residues from past trials, what I call faith toxins, prayers to refresh your spirit, and then through yummy strategic foods, each of your 15 body systems are cleansed for a total body detox. People are losing weight and gaining faith. Go to lauraharrismith.com today to get your copy of the 30 Day Faith Detox. Welcome back from the break, everybody. I'm Laura. You're watching The Three. And now here is more of my interview with actress Kim Carath, Gretel from The Sound of Music. Well, I want to also talk about the Von Trapp Lodge. And so I've pulled you into this because these episodes are really about the Von Trapp family. But you remain just the face of that, the face of that for the movie. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves Gretel. And so tell me how many times have you been to the lodge, the Von Trapp Lodge, which is in Vermont? How, how many times have you been? I've only been once. Okay. But I would love to go back again. It was an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. It was just really an honor to go there. And unbelievable to see the, I don't know if when you went, you saw those amazing black and white pictures, which were all over in downstairs of seeing yes. them when they came to the United States, mm -hmm. you know, learning, learning how to milk cows and yeah. maple trees. The cows and, and the maple syrup the, kept yeah. everything going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but so, like learning how to do that. Fascinating, impressive, amazing people. From, and they're migrants. You know, they're immigrants from another country. I mean, they're this immigrants. was... They, and they, specifically, they were, they were refugees. Mm -hmm. And they came with no money. When they performed, they always wear, wore their costumes. Right. But they wore their Austrian... Because they had no money to buy they came other up, things. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing. And Werner ended up fighting in World War II. Yes. And this leads and, to, to tell, because I was going to ask you... Yeah. If you had seen his chapel and that so when, ties in with the story it's just so beautiful of why he built it start with that his war so, uh, absolutely so Werner you know after coming here working etc growing up I forget how young he was he went to fight at for the uh, as an American soldier in World War II because Werner spoke German obviously he overheard what was being said yes. by German soldiers yes. and was able to save a number of his mm -hmm. fellow soldiers mm -hmm. as a consequence. Yeah. And he'd made a promise. Um, one of the most affecting things to see um, at the Von Trapp Lodge is Werner's Chapel because he'd made a promise um, while he was gone that if God allowed him to live and survive, he would build a chapel himself mm -hmm. at the top of this little hill and that's what he did and it's the most breathtaking little chapel it's made of stones which mm -hmm. he carried up this fairly high steep hill oh yes and it was it's steep just enough that we, we couldn't get up there that day it was so muddy when we were there so I appreciate you sharing that because what they told us what Bob Stafford uh, told us was that it was offered to him by the townspeople we will help you carry these rocks up and he said no 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 i made a vow to god that i would build this chapel for him and i'm going to do it so i hated we could could not see it but i appreciate you taking us back there oh it was it was so affecting mm -hmm. i mean really the whole story is so remarkable these people mm -hmm. were so heroic mm -hmm. on on so many levels yes, they were they absolutely they, were. they didn't just it wasn't, there was no hypocrisy. There was no, you know, it was, it was completely heartfelt. 
mm-hmm. everything they did. And the fact that Georg von Trapp refused the overtures of Hitler yeah. three times yeah. on three separate And he didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, he took right? more chance. And, you know, they were not specifically at risk or they wouldn't have been. They weren't Jewish, mm-hmm. but they left everything because yes. uh, upon the, the third rejection of Hitler, apparently yes, friends that puts of, you in the crosshairs. I mean, that's well, that's not- apparently friends of his said, you know, you're not going to be OK if you stay. Mm. So you can't keep saying no to Hitler. Right. And um you know, it's kind of an incredible thing when people really stand up for something yeah. really meaningful like that. Do you think that that is one of the reasons why the sound of music resonates yes. with people? Is, is that going yes. too deep? Because I believe that it is. It's not just yes. the, the kids and the music. And I mean, the the stage is set in this film for things that we're still dealing with today, really, yes. in the world. Yes, Why totally. do you think it, it resonates so well? And so well, uh, but exactly for that reason, it's his, it's a historic, it's his, people feel the truth of that story, mm-hmm. whether they think they do or not, because it's yeah. true at its fundamental level, mm-hmm. there's a depth and um, every chance I get, I always make a reference to the historical Von Trapps and, and who they were and what they did, because I think that wasn't, it, it sort of wasn't discussed as much at the time, mm-hmm. but it's, it's the most critical part of it. And yes, it's a masterpiece in terms of, you know, production design and music and all the rest, but it is based on this story of a courageous family that was, that loved one another so much and had integrity Mm-hmm. and courage. They were just lovely people. And one of the memories I have that is just indelible was of singing with them, singing Silent Night with them oh, and in 1999. Goodness. It was them, us, so it was the film, the real Von Trapps, <laughs> and the Broadway cast. And the th- all of us together sang Silent Night at this, wow. at this little reception. And it was just listening to their voices because they had beautiful voices. It just totally, you know, gave us all chills. I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. Oh my goodness. I cannot even imagine. Wow. Yeah. Well, Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been just such a treat uh, to go back to those days. I know you must get interviewed so many times uh, about your involvement in the movie. I've tried to ask you questions that maybe... Others would not. I'm and I kudos to my granddaughter for wanting to know just a day in the life of Kim on the set. Like I I really appreciate you sitting down with us. It's been a pleasure. (laughs) Lots and lots of fun. Thank you, Laura. Okay, everybody, don't go anywhere because after the break, we're gonna come back with our last segment of our last episode from the Von Traps. Stay close. Neuromatics Oil is a family of therapeutic-grade patented oil blends created by nutritionist and author Laura Harris-Smith. Invented for her own lifelong journey for neurological health, Quiet Brain now helps those worldwide who suffer from insomnia, migraines, anxiety, seizures, tremors, and more. Quiet Brain contains oils like frankincense, myrrh, lavender, sandalwood, and others. Next, Happy Brain is a bright mood-lifting citrus blend and contains oils like lemon, lime, clementine, spearmint, and more. Users say it combats depression and even aids in weight loss. Next is Sharp Brain, Laura's Focus Blend, also used to improve cognitive memory issues with oils like coffee, cinnamon, vanilla, clove, and others. Each $69.95 bottle is a 10-week supply if used daily, or about a dollar a day. And right now, buy two bottles and get the third one free, and get a free eye mask using the promo code on your screen at neuromaticsoil.com or at 1-855-784-3827. That's 1-855-QUIETBRAIN. I'm naturopathic Dr. Laura Harris-Smith, and if you'll give me 10 days, Give It to God and Go to Bed can help you stress less, sleep better, and dream more. There are even links inside to my free 10 Days to Deeper Sleep and Dreams program and 10 Good Night videos. Can you close your eyes and just still listen to me? The whole book takes place in your bedroom, and with chapter titles like The Junk Under Your Bed, The Treasures in Your Bedroom, and The Monsters in Your Closet, Give It to God and Go to Bed helps you learn to rest and hear God speak in dreams. Take back your sleep and dreams, my friend, with Give It to God and Go to Bed. 
Welcome back, everybody. You're watching The Three. I'm Laura. We're still in Stowe. We're in Vermont and having a good time up here. Uh, all things Von Trapp. Talking to you about the Von Trapp Family Lodge that we have been staying at. And so we're going to go back down there um, in previous episodes. One of the things that we did was we introduced you to one of the guys there who just knows everything about the lodge. He knows everything about the family, knew many of the family members, still does, and gives their history talks there. His name is Bob Stafford. And he became a wealth of information to us on these three episodes. And we want to toss back to uh, just some more great footage that we got with him, him just telling us more about the Von Trapp family. So take a look. So we're in the sunroom of the main lodge and uh, this painting is of Salzburg, very prominent in the center is the castle in Salzburg. Uh, but this building right here is the Nonberg Abbey. That's where Maria was a novice nun. And uh, so this uh, painting, uh, of course, means quite a bit to the family. I bet that it does. So the, the Trapp family, uh, the lodge has many uh, different facets to it, the property, and one of them is our own sugar house. We make our own maple syrup. Uh, we have about 2,000 uh, taps, and uh, one year we made 700 gallons of maple syrup. <laughs> we uh, we use it in our restaurants, and uh, we uh, okay, we sell yeah. it here as well. Uh, the Baron was trying to tell Maria, no, no, don't even think about buying this property. This is the worst farm I've ever seen in my life. And if you look at this picture, you can see what he was looking at. Uh, the buildings were falling apart. And uh, mm -hmm. so they, uh, they were able to buy this property for $5,000. It was a 300-acre dairy what? farm uh, complete with the cows. But that was in the middle of World War II, and money Wait, was hard. Wait, tell me again. Buy. They bought this property for how much? For five thousand dollars, yeah. <laughs> My goodness! But they they thought it was quite a quite a deal, and the farmer was so excited to sell the property uh, because he knew that uh, the farming was very difficult work, mm -hmm. and it was hard to make ends meet. And the farmer was right because after two years of trying to get the dairy farm to work, the family said they had more bills than they had before, so they sold off the cows and switched to singing camps, and then that led to putting addition on their home and. Uh, they uh, started operating the lodge in 1949. As they say in the movie, the Reverend Mother says, when God closes a door, somewhere he opens a window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, so uh, uh, Maria, she, she said uh, her faith got her through all the very sure. difficult times. And uh, mm -hmm. so she, she never lost that faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they first moved to Stowe, there wasn't a um, Catholic church. Mm -hmm. Maria helped raise the funds. Uh, for the first Catholic church here in Stowe, and that's the Blessed Sacrament Church. Mm. Wow. And so then the sibling left alive is Johannes, who... Yes. who he's 83 years old. He's 83? Yeah, 83. Okay, and so then he owns all of this. So eventually he bought out uh, the others. Is that the way the story goes? Yes. Uh, so at one point there were... 30 family members that had uh, all voting shares and it got to be very cumbersome. We have a huge family of 25, I cannot imagine. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> he said, you know, everybody had their own idea how things should yes. work. And uh, <laughs> so he bought uh, enough so he had controlling shares. And so uh, primarily now it's Johannes, his wife Lynn, and their two children, Christina and Sam, mm -hmm. who are now married, have their own kids, right. and also live here on property mm -hmm. um, on 2600 acres you can have your whole yes whole absolutely and of course we've been uh, having a wonderful sit down sit down time with christina all right tell us who this last one is. okay so uh that's the grave site of Werner von trapp okay. uh Werner. uh he and his brother rupert uh joined the u.s army a year after moving to stowe they joined uh in 1943 uh they uh, were in the 10th Mount Division, kind of elite corps of mountaineers and skiers. Let me just put my head around this. So the family escapes so that Captain Baron Von Trapp does not have to fight in that war. And then the sons come over here and have to go back. Yes. Yeah. So oh. it was uh, kind of ironic. But fighting uh, for the United States. Fighting for the U.S. <laughs> and it had to be traumatic because now mm. they're going to be fighting against their former fellow countrymen. Um, mm. There was a battle in Italy that they were in. Now, the older boy, Rupert, he was a medic in the 10th Mount Division. The younger boy, Werner, was a rifleman. There was a battle in Italy that they were in that 
Werner did not think he would survive, and uh, he made a prayer to God. He said, God, if you get me out of here alive, when I get back home, I'll build this chapel. So he and his brother survive, and in 1946, uh, Werner starts hiking up on the hill behind the lodge, hauling stone up there. People were asking what uh, he was doing, explain the story, and they said, oh my goodness, Werner, let us help you build this. And he said, no, he said, this is my promise to God. I need to do it myself. Oh so, my goodness. Yeah. So it took him over four years to finish it. And uh, we had to take all the stones up there. Up, up on the hill. <laughs> oh yeah. Goodness. And uh, if you hike up there, you can see it's, it's quite a job. Um, but, May I ask um, one more question about that before you move on from Werner? So I understand that you can leave prayers there and that and who was it that carried the prayers down yeah so uh inside it's just a small chapel um he built it in a style that he was accustomed to seeing in on the hillsides and in europe um inside there's an altar and then to the right of that there's a little prayer box so people will write prayers they'll put it in the prayer box now the baron and maria had three of their own children uh, so they had a total of 10 children and they all sang together as a singing group. They sang for almost 20 years as a singing group. The oldest of those three children, her name is Rosemary. At the age of 92, she was hiking up still to that chapel up behind the lodge to collect the prayers that people left behind. And then she would bring them down to, um, in the village of Stowe, there's a big white church called the Stowe Community Church, and that's her church, and she'd get a couple ladies together to pray that these prayers came true for the people that, oh, that wrote them. She's a very sweet lady. That warms my heart. Oh, I tell you what, I love my job, but I have really loved it these last few episodes, finding out about the Von Trapp Family Lodge, getting to come here, getting to share this experience with you. I think the only thing I should have done differently is stayed a couple of extra days so that I could rest. We have been to just about every inch of this 2,600 uh, acre piece of heaven, as I've called it, and you've got to come. So go to the address on your screen. It's trapfamily.com and get to Vermont. The Von Trapps, they're in America. They're, they're still in Vermont and you can come and you can meet them and you can get to know the rich family history that exists here. When they found these hills, they said that they looked like the hills of Austria. I've heard that story, and now that I have been here, I believe that it is true. The hills are definitely alive with the sound of music here. What a treat. I hope that you have enjoyed these last episodes of The Three. I just pray over you that you and your family, if it's just inspired by the Von Trapp family as is mine, I pray that your family would also find that common bond, that thing that they do well, do together and present it to the world uh, in the way that this family has. I am leaving here inspired and I know that you will be too if you'll bring your family to this spot. All right, everybody. Another great episode of The Three. I'm Laura Harris-Smith. Bye-bye for now. Just wanted to say thank you to this guy who makes it all happen. This guy. If you could not do any of this without him. So, God bless Chris Smith.